Welcome to My Homeschool Hub's roundtable discussion with our mentor moms. Today I sit down with Kirsten, Sharon, and Angela and ask them, what do I need to homeschool? Check out their answers and remember, you can work with any of these moms on a one-on-one -on -one basis by going to myhomeschoolhub.com and click on Mentor Moms. Welcome to my Homeschool Hub's Mentor Moms Roundtable discussion, and we are going to talk today about what do I need to homeschool? That's a frequent question that is asked. So I'd love to hear each of your thoughts on that. It can be as specific or as broad and imaginative as you can come up with. I'd just love to hear what you have to say. What do I need to homeschool? So the first thing that I would do is I would probably look at, you know, what what grades are my children? Am I starting from the beginning or am I pulling my child out of school and starting in the middle somewhere? And a good resource is if you type in to Google like scope and sequence or what does my child need to know in first grade, any of those kind of keywords, it will pop up usually a whole list of things that by each subject, what they should know by the end of each grade. So if you're starting in the middle, that might be a good thing to do kind of starting off. Yeah, that's a good place to see how they're doing too, right? Like maybe if there's some gaps or things that have been missed to create gaps where maybe we need to backtrack a little bit and maybe recover some of what might have been lost, right? For sure. I, I guess I take a little bit different approach because of mistakes I've made. I would say if you're a God-fearing person, I would start with prayer. <laughs> Make sure this is where you need to go. And secondarily, I would involve... Um, a spouse, if you have them, <laughs> if you have a spouse, um, usually it's moms reaching out for homeschooling, but you know, occasionally it could be dads, occasionally it can be a single mom. But I think if you're doing it as a team, it's really important to have that foundation and buy in from the other person. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, once you're in agreement that yes, we want to do this, then I think you can really jump in and start. And absolutely to what Angela said, you've got to decide where am I be beginning from? I mean, my kids in elementary school, have they been in a traditional school or are we just deciding to do this while they're toddlers? Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's important to realize that each family has different needs and different, um, you know, with work schedules of a, of a father or even a mother, I guess, if a father is gonna homeschool, I kind of, my oldest son has kind of, I kind of stuck that out with me recently that he might be the one homeschooling, which is kind of fun, but anyway, um, yeah, so each family's schedule looks different. Each family has, uh, yeah, different needs. Um, yeah, you really just need to have those deep conversations on how your time is going to look because time is of is the of the essence. It's it is the greatest important thing that you're going to be giving your kid, your children is you're going to be giving them your time and sacrificing um, the things that. I don't know, I'm not saying sacrificing everything that you want to do because you don't, because you build relationships with other people. And that's the second thing I would say is that you find a great support group. You find a support group of like-minded people and make those telephone calls. There's there's so many good resources out there um, to to find those groups. Trying to just, what, what's, what's it gonna look like for your family? And try not to think, well, you know, so-and-so down the street looks like this, and that's what it needs to look like for me. Just, but those conversations are really good with a with a support and a, of, of a spouse or, yeah, or of a, a group, so. What would y'all say it takes, like the kind of person or the character traits or the, the supplies or the resources, what do you need to homeschool? Well, I, another thought that I had is, as Sharon was talking, and it, I don't know that it's necessary the supplies and needs, I guess I would take that a little bit further down the road, but I think it's understanding your child. So mm -hmm. to Sharon's point mm -hmm. that it's about the time that you're going to be committing and it's really the time investment that is going to benefit your child the most. Mm -hmm. And so right. sort of to continue that thought, um, I think it's important that you learn what your child's learning style is. Um, I didn't know what that meant when I started but mm -hmm. it's pretty basic. I mean, there's three learning styles and you can Google that, but I mean, basically do they, are they auditory? Are they kinesthetic, meaning they need to touch it? Um, mm -hmm. Or do they, they need to see it? Are they visual? So I think that's a good place to start is just learning about your child. You know, maybe if they haven't mm -hmm. been successful in a traditional environment, maybe it's because it doesn't touch their learning style. And uh, alongside that, I would say to, to learn what that love language is for your child. Mm -hmm. um, one, like what feeds that person? And again, you can Google that, you can do five love languages. 
which are pretty standard across the board, no matter what culture mm-hmm. or economic you know, status you're in. And, and learn how they speak to you. Like, how do they show you love? And I think when you have that as a basis for your education, it, it makes those tools for picking and choosing curricula or, or what you're going to do for the year, what your goals are. I think, I know my child, so this would be good. Now, if you have that foundation already, well, you know, you've checked that box. You can just move right into the nitty gritty. Sometimes you don't have that foundation yet with mm-hmm. your kids, especially if they've been out of the home for a while um, in a different traditional school setting. So. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree with Kristen and Sharon as well. I um, I really resonate with what Sharon said about, uh, you know, every family is different. It's totally a different, uh, you know, what works for Susie down the street doesn't work for you and won't work for Teresa either, you know, so you really have to find out what you want your homeschool to feel like. It doesn't have to look like a desk with a whiteboard and you can, there's so many different ways to do it. There's a wide spectrum of homeschooling all the way from unschooling all the way to classical conversations, which is very strict and you have everything in between. So it, and it's super overwhelming at first. So that is something that, you know, that you kind of learn as you go. And one of the things that I learned from an older mom when I first started homeschooling was, uh, you know, I, I get all stressed out about, oh, she didn't do this at the right time, my daughter and all of that. And, and she would always pull me aside and she would go, oh, you are here for a season and you just need to be in that season and there will be time enough for everything else. And so she was, she was always super encouraging and in that kind of calming way. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, think that's I, huge. I think you do need to you need to know your family. You need to know yourself. You need to take the time to learn the things that you don't know, and you need to be present in the moment and accept everybody for who they are and where they are at that time. Right? I think that's a big need for homeschoolers. I think I think it's just important that you just start <laughs> because it might look, you know, it might, and when you when you first. Uh, get into the situation, you might have not a whole lot of information behind you, but you know what, but you know, you kind of, we all went to school, so you kind of have, you kind of have an idea of what, you know, learning looks like or what it should look like, but, but just sticking yourself out there, and it might look like you have a whiteboard, you know, for a while, or you might have the desk. I did. (laughs) I did. I had the little, little old-fashioned school desk for, for when we, you know, and it was exciting. Here we go. We're going to start school. But, but the thing of it is, is that it, that morphed really fast because I was learning along with them. And I was trying to figure out, okay, yeah, I was trying to figure out who are you and how do you learn? And, you know, but I had to start somewhere. So that's the thing is that don't be afraid to start. Dig in there. You love your kids. You want the best for them. You know, just, just start, you know. Yeah, well, and you can't learn all those things unless you're with them. Exactly. So you have to start to get to know them, right? Because you, do. you, you have do. to be at home together to be able to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. those are all great things, great, great ideas and and tips on what you need to be a homeschooler. Do you any have any other final thoughts that anybody wants to share? Just don't be afraid to mess up because it's going to happen. Yeah, that was, that was my, <laughs> on my list too. <laughs> yeah, I think I was just about to say the same thing. It's just, you know, yeah. you know your personality, know yourself and give yourself some grace, you know. Right. It, it, like Sharon said, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just starts with you and your child or your children or, you know, however that's going to look with alongside your, your spouse or, you know, if you're, if you're a single parent, you know, on your own, but, but Mm -hmm. yeah, just start and be forgiving. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have to share this one thing that you just made me think of. Um, Somebody that I know who works in a local public school system. um, He, he lost his son in a car accident Mm -hmm. and I, I can't even process it in my head and in my heart what that would be like. And I asked him one day, I said, how, how are you d- doing it? Like, how do you get through each day? And he said, the secret is, and I think I asked him what, with all of that, what his hindsight 2020 knowledge was, what he could tell me to be a better parent. And he said, the secret to all of it is have grace for yourself and have grace for others. You know, that's, that's mm-hmm. how you get through it. And mm-hmm. that's how you take care of the relationships. And that's what it all comes down to, right? Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. when you have good relationships in your family, the learning 
can just explode. That's the mm -hmm. foundation for all of it when, it when we have good relationships. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your, your insight and your experience. And I, I just appreciate it so much. I hope that everybody who hears this can really benefit from all your experience. We'll see you next time. Would you like to work with one of these mentor moms on a one-on-one -on -one basis and have them coach you through your homeschool journey? Just go to myhomeschoolhub.com and click on Mentor Moms, where you can sign up to work with them. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.